Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name's Mike. This episode hopefully is another quick episode really. It's just to show how to change a quartz watch movement for a new one. Uh, this particular watch here is of a very good friend of mine, uh, not in the watch world actually, a personal friend. And his name's Chris Henderson, lives around the corner from me. And this is an Adidas watch. And this was the first watch he bought. Uh, I'm not sure how old he was at the time, probably in his teens, perhaps late teens or something like that. It's got great sentimental value to him and he wanted to get it working because it stopped. And I found that it stopped because the typical battery acid has got all over the circuit board in there. And it's one of those really thin, I don't even know what they make it out of, but it's nothing serious. It's melted it basically. So the uh, movement is kaput and it's time to find a new one. So. I've managed to source one, I've bought one, and in this video I'm going to show you how to identify uh, the quartz movement in a watch. Uh, there should always be some sort of telltale signs inside, and I'll show you how I found it on this one and also where I bought it from and how I bought it. Um, that might help you guys. The actual changing of it is going to be relatively straightforward, but I'll take you through all of those step-by-step uh, -step processes as well. Hopefully some of you might find this useful. It is pretty straightforward, but then, you know, Perhaps a bit of encouragement from somebody like me to show you how to do it is all you might need to try it for yourself. So we're going to go straight on the bench. I'll show you a bit closer up of the watch. We'll put it on the microscope and away we go. Okay, here we are looking at the watch. And uh, as I can say, it's a little Adidas watch. Don't see many of these particularly. I guess they're more of a sort of fashion watch, um, but I mean no disrespect by that to my mate. Um, so um, it's completely uh, seized up and what we have to do really i'm going to put it on the microscope for it really um, now there are plenty of reference numbers on the back but i found them not very helpful because presumably that is just to do with adidas adidas don't make their own quartz movements of course so they're buying them in so what we can see in here is a very generic looking uh, movement so um, like I say, we're going to put it on the microscope because we need to read some of these small um, numbers that are on it. So we'll go over to the scope now. I'll show you those in more detail. Of course, if you haven't got a microscope, don't worry about this. If you're doing it, just use your, um, some strong magnification, be it a magnifying glass or a, you know an eye loop, something like that will be all you need. All right then, so we're looking at times 20 magnification bit over over kill really but uh, it's the only way really to film this uh, comprehensively so uh, as we can see there it says no jewels and all I want to do first of all is start looking on here Swiss parts Thailand Thailand movement well that's a bit of a contradiction and that's the magic logo to start with so E T A so that is the actual uh, module maker. ETA is a, uh, from memory is a Swiss brand and they make quartz movements, they make mechanical movements. Uh, they're probably one of the biggest movement makers there are out there, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, so that's our first identifier. So we need an ETA quartz movement to fit this uh, particular um, watch. And with a bit of deducing, if I come over here, this is where the battery is or was and um, again we can see that ETA uh, motif there and a number underneath uh, which is kind of faded in places now that will be just from the wear of the battery and possibly the uh, acid damage that was in here which is quite extensive it was all underneath here under that circuit board now let's just get back here and get that back in focus so what we're looking for is that particular number there. So it says 804, and then it's got some other digits past it, which are quite faint. And it, I didn't do this on the microscope when I was looking. And what we have is 80411, and there's actually a four there as well. Doesn't really show very well in this light, but there is. That is 804. Let me just try and turn it around a little bit because I'm conscious that it'll be upside down when I come to edit. <laughs> right, 804114. I can just make out that four at the end there. So that's all we need. So all we need to do now is hit Google 
and look for that reference and then we should be able to find the quartz movement. However, I'm going to go straight to Cousins because Cousins sell hundreds if not thousands of quartz movements and it's quite easy to navigate. So I'm going to do some screenshots now of how to identify the movement on their website. Okay, here we are on the Cousins website and the first thing we need to do is go to watch parts. Then once we're in watch parts, we need to go to watch parts branded. Scroll down and we're looking for ETA. So it's all in alphabetical order. And there it is at the bottom there. And once we're in here, we just need to go for the movement part. And at that point, we now need to type in the number, which was 804114. Click the little dot and search for all. And there we go. So we can see that the first one is obsolete, um, which is a bit of a problem because that's the one I want because it's the date at three, which I'm highlighting there. Um, it is offering an alternative, um, but I don't really want to go for that because I'm not 100% sure it would fit or would be that compatible. Um, I'm sure it must be because cousins are offering it, but at the moment, I'm going to have a look at the other options. So the other option is to go for this one, which is the date at six. And that means that the uh, date wheel there is completely different uh, to the other one. However, I'm thinking I can probably change that when we come to assemble it and just swap it over and then therefore everything would work. Uh, failing that, of course, I can just take out the circuit and put that in the watch and that should then fire it up. So there you go, that's how you would find uh, this watch, certainly on uh, Cousins. Okay, so it arrived in the post, and uh, hindsight is a wonderful thing. I really do feel that perhaps I should have looked at the original a little bit more closely uh, before ordering. And the only reason for that is, so here we go. So I thought that perhaps we could change the um, date disc on here relatively straightforward um, it is on other watches I do uh, but on here as you might be able to see it's kind of this cover plate which which holds it all in is um, welded it's plastic welded or glued and I could take that off and um, get the day ring off but I do think that I wouldn't then be able to put it back on properly so we're gonna have to go to plan B and plan B, there's the other one incidentally, plan B is just to swap the uh, module. So the little circuit on the back there, I'll remove that, put it in the other one, and hopefully that should do the trick. So if you are following along with this video to say how to swap a quartz movement, it's still pretty straightforward. So at this stage, all you'd wanna be doing is remove the stem, remove this little cover here, this little dummy hand, Put your dial on, set the hands, which I'll show you later on anyway, uh, and there you go. It should just run fine from that. It's a really, really straightforward thing, but now we've just got a little bit of an extra complication. So the plan is then to turn this over and remove that little module. Okay, so to remove the, um, it's got a little cover plate over the top of it. There's just three screws. There's the uh, stem release screw there and there's one here, and there's one here. So I'm just gonna do that off camera because otherwise you're gonna get nice shots of my fingers. Uh, so I'll do that and then uh, we'll come back and we'll remove the little module. Okay, the three screws are out and the cover plate should just come straight off like so. And then the module is a little bit more tricky. It rests on some little posts and because it's paper thin you really got to be a bit careful there we go so you can kind of see the circuit there uh, it's got a little chip in the middle which is uh, does it work for it very very basic but there we go so now all I'm going to do is bring in the other one and uh, which I've already stripped out and we're just going to replace. Right, so I've got the uh, the original module now in front of me and we'll just 
drop in the circuit carefully get that all lined up on its posts and then once I'm happy with that which I am uh, we'll bring in the other cover whoops and I haven't got that lined up at all have I so there's a little you probably can't see the long bit there it just needs to go in a slot and from the angle of my eyes I can't really see it there we go so it's just a case of me screwing that in which again I'll do now and then we'll test it okay I've installed the three screws and I've had to put the stem and crown in and you've got to make sure you do that as well because this is a quartz watch and all quartz watches hack and if you don't know what hack means it means when you pull the stem out the second hand stops and it means you can set it a lot more accurately and if you don't install the uh, stem then the thing is always in hack mode and it won't actually be working so you might think that you've got a dead watch but of course you haven't you just haven't put the stem in uh, so i've also installed a brand new battery which is uh, in this one uh, a 361 size uh, from Minata and a key way to tell whether this thing is going is of course to listen to it so I'm going to try and see if I can bring my microphone in now I'm not too sure whether you can hear that or not uh, but it is definitely ticking so we're good to go for the next part of the build which will be to put the dial back on and then of course fit the hands and uh, set the time well sorry set the the date so the date changes at 12 o'clock and then we're pretty much done we just got to case the watch okay now we need to put the dial on and i'll just put some protection on my fingers to stop fingerprints i don't want fingerprints on the dial and the dial has feet as you can see and they just line up with the holes that are on the movement this is just a friction fit so they're just going to push on and there you go the dial is on as quick as that now this particular dial has this chapter ring as well and that locates in those four holes that you can see there however it doesn't want to stay in i think it has to be in the case and then it all holds in position um, so i'm going to leave that off for the time being so the next step is to make sure that the date there changes uh, when the hands pass 12 o'clock and the way we do that is we just have to wind the watch as it is without any hands on until the day window date window sorry uh, clicks over the moment it starts to click over or is clicking over that's when you need to install the hands uh, it's a very very straightforward thing to do so what i'm going to do is wind on And here we go so we're about to change now a lot of people do it just before i like to do it on the change there so all i've got to do is line up my hour hand which i'm just trying to get hold of so we need to bring that in Carefully put it over the top here. And then line it up. And then I've got a hand pushing tool. And then once I've pushed it on, I'm not being too firm with that um, you just then want to have a look make sure it's looking like it's sitting straight in this case it isn't so we can just do a little oops there really aren't nice um, things this little module so now all we need to do is turn it over 24 that will give us an indication where we're at there 
There you go. So I'm happy with that. So I'll install the minute hand. Same procedure, line it as best you can with the 12. Again, once you're happy, and then push that on, and then I can already see that they're actually slightly out again. And then now, if we wind through 24. So it's just before, a few minutes before, which in fairness is okay. Uh, they have to have a little tolerance on these things. You're never gonna get it absolutely spot on. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, so now all it is is to install the second hand, which is usually the really hard one for most people. Um, on this one, it possibly won't be that straightforward for me uh, because it's a little bit smaller by the looks of things. However, again want to line it up just a little tap there and then we want to make sure it's not going to be fouling which it isn't and if I push the crown in I was going to say we should get it ticking there we go So that is the uh, module swap or the uh, the circuit board swap at least on this particular watch i'm now going to put it back in the case and um, that will be the end of this video okay so there we are the uh, the movement or the module is back in its case and ticking away just nicely so hopefully my friend chris is going to be really pleased to see his watch up and running once again uh, so that's the end of this video um, Kind of hope that you either enjoyed it or you got something from this um, it's a bit of a ad lib one as always um, wasn't quite expecting the issue to be the way it was in the sense that i was hoping just really to swap the module over uh, but not being able to buy the right one to start with didn't help but there we go uh, thanks again for watching this video thanks for supporting this channel don't forget to check out my uh, Facebook group, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations, because it's full of uh, people just like me who uh, really enjoy watches and they're there to help you if you've got any questions. Um, also, check me out on Instagram at My Retro Watches, and of course, have a look at my website, why not? And you can see all my collection of watches, uh, which is growing <laughs> literally by the week at the moment. So, uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.